The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Who New Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sports Insider. My name is Glenn Spillman, and you are listening to us on Armed Radio out of Boston, Massachusetts. Hello, everybody. Good evening. I see Blue Tick Ham jumped on the freaking show right away because I know what he's going to say. He's going to say, you owe me five bucks. I absolutely do, ladies and gentlemen. I, <laughs> As you can see, the title of this show is Patriots sucked it up last night. I apologize to my producers in freaking Boston, and I apologize to all the Boston fans, but we'll get into what the heck happened to the Patriots at home losing by as much as they did. But um, before we get into that, I just want to let everybody know that we are on Armed Radio every single Wednesday and every single Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. And um, you guys can go to our website, sportsinsideronline.com, and you could email me if you want a question answered or if there's a subject matter that you want to talk about on air. I will absolutely 100% um, do that for you. Absolutely. Hey, there are some uh, some some good news for uh, Patriots fans. Um, the uh, Eric Berry ruptured his left Achilles tendon the fourth quarter last night, and um, he's out for the year. So uh, looks like whiskey, cars, and cigars is on. If you are on Johnny Blender, welcome to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Blender, Whiskey, Cars, and Cigars, has a show every Wednesday um, at um, 5 p.m. Pacific, so I think it's 7 p.m. Central Time, his time, called Whiskey, Cars, and Cigars. So go, you can watch it on Periscope TV, or you go to the Facebook page, Whiskey, Cars, and Cigars, and uh, check it out, watch it. Yes, Blue Tick Town, I said it's good news for Patriots fans. I'm not wishing injury on anybody, but when you've got a team that beats you 42 to 27, say somebody gets hurt, uh, oh well, too bad, so sad, it's good for the team. All right, I'm a Raider fan, you guys know that. Um, when Derek Carr got injured, it sucks, but um, I believe that's why you know the teams that got in got in. If it wasn't for the injury to Carr, I believe that the Raiders would have made it to the Super Bowl. I believe the Raiders would have won the Super Bowl. <clears throat> so, um, Blue Tick says, you need Tyreek Hill hurt then. No one can cover him. Well, I, I wouldn't say that no one can cover no one uh, because everyone has a bad day. Everyone has a bad quarter, even a bad series, um, or whatever. You, it's like everyone thought the Patriots were going to run the table this year. Not going to happen. They did not run the table. They cannot run the table. They are not going to run the table. So let's look at the regular season game, shall we? So they lose at home versus the Chiefs. Freaking sucks. That's not how the Super Bowl champs are supposed to start the freaking year. But I'm not a freaking Patriots don't even Don't even think for a minute I'm a super uh, Patriots fan. Not. But kind of rooting for them a little bit. They are at the Saints. They very well could lose that game too and start out 0-2. Um, versus the Texans. Uh, that's going to be at home. I think they'll take that one. The Panthers, eh, well, 
That could be iffy, but I think they'll take that. The Buccaneers, definitely. Jets, definitely. Versus the Falcons at home. The Falcons very well could beat them at home. So there's three games that the Patriots could lose. I think they'll beat the, the Chargers, the Broncos. I think they'll lose against the Raiders. That's four games they're going to lose. They'll beat the Dolphins, Bills, Dolphins again. The Steelers, that's a toss-up. They could lose that one too. So let's just say they do. That's five games that they could lose. They win the Bills, they win the Jets. Okay? So they can go 11-5. and five. Patriots. Um, Tom Brady, let's just go over some of the stats from last night's game. A bit dismal, but um, let's go over the, the, the box score from last night's game. Let's compare, first off, foremost, Right off the bat, let's compare the quarterbacks. All right. You can you got Alex Smith. That was 28 for 35. 368 yards. You've got Tom Brady. 16 for 36, 267 yards. So 101 yards less. Alex Smith average was 10. And a half yards. Brady's average was 7.4 yards. Here's the big stat that really freaking sucks. Patriots fans, or for FanDuel fans, or DraftKings, or any freaking body else that does your little fantasy games. Alex Smith, four TDs. Tom Brady, a duck egg. Duck, 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 freaking egg. All right? Um, Tom Brady was sacked three times. Alex Smith was sacked three times. Um, Blue Tick Hound finally says something. Uh, yes, uh, they miss Edelman, the Patriots, absolutely. The QBR rating for Alex Smith is 90.4. QBR rating for Tom Brady is 35.1. I dare say there's probably not another quarterback in the league Sunday that will have a QBR rating of less than Tom Brady's. That is my thought. But the rushing yards for the Chiefs, Chiefs had 185. Patriots had 124. The average was almost double for the Chiefs. The Chiefs averaged 6.9 um, yards per carry. The Patriots, 3.5. Patriots had three rushing TDs, all by Mike um, Gillespie. The um, uh, Chiefs had two rushing TDs, one by Kareem Hunt and the other by um, Kendrick West. What kind of name is Charkhandrick? Sounds like some kind of foot disease. You go to the doctor's office and he's looking at you and he goes, yeah, you know what? I'm going to give you some prescription pills. I want you to take three of them one time a day, morning, afternoon, night. You've got Charkhandrick. we got to clear that up. Um, <clears throat> receiving yards. Again, the Patriots about 101 yards less. The um, receiving yards for the Chiefs, 368 yards compared to the Patriots, 267. Now, the, the, the Patriots did average more per catch, 16.7 yards, compared to 13.1 average of the Chiefs. The longest um, pass was to Kareem Hunt, 78 yards for, the, for Alex Smith. For Tom Brady, the longest was 54 to Brandon Cooks. Now, um, the Patriots, I don't know what happened with them, man. You have the Jedi Master, freaking Bill Belichick. Uh, don't know what happened. But uh, there was three fumbles in the game. The Chiefs had two of them. Patriots had one. So, um, what do you think is going to happen to the Patriots after they lose the game? Think that they're going to just go downhill from there? 
uh, do you think that they could still repeat? I don't know. It's only one game. But do you think that they could repeat as Super Bowl champs? Don't know. Um, only time will tell. I know that's a cliche answer, but that's what you're going to get. So let's go ahead and Blue Tick Hound. Um, he says I stole his Alabama pick, which, I mean, I think any monkey would have picked freaking Alabama for that game. But let's just go over the uh, games for this coming Sunday. So let's go for some parlay picks. I'm going to give you three, three good picks this week. I'm going to try and give you three. I'm going to give you two, definitely. I'm going to try and give you three. So go ahead and take the Oakland Raiders over the Tennessee Titans. Oakland Raiders um, are plus two and a half. So take the Raiders. Um, Then you have the Jets' Bills. They're minus eight and a half. Buffalo is. I wouldn't take that game. You've got Falcons at the Bears. Falcons are minus six and a half. Take the Falcons, definitely. That's your number one game you want to pick right there. So, your number one game you want to take is the Falcons, minus six and a half. The other one is you have the Steelers, minus nine and a half. Take the Falcons, Steelers, parlay those. Um, Andrew Luck is out for the Colts. I wouldn't even worry about that game. Seahawks, Green Bay, you got Green Bay, minus three. That would be a good one. Um... Giants at Cowboys. Um, but I would t- the, the two I would take would be the Pittsburgh and Falcons. And then the third, to parlay that one with, I'd go the Raiders. So I'd take the Raiders, take the Falcons, take the Steelers, parlay those, and you'll be sitting pretty and thanking me come next Wednesday. Uh, Blue Chick Hound says, do you want to press the five and he'll take the Titans? Yes, I do. Absolutely. I will, obviously, I'm going to take the Oakland Raiders, my team. Um, so, yes, I will take that. I will press that. And uh, you got Titans my, minus two and a half. So I get two and a half points. Well, really, which isn't really anything. Um, but, uh, yes, I will take I will take that bet. Um, so let's go right now. Let's talk about... Uh, well, the Yankees are, are, are stepping up a little bit. They're, they are beating the Rangers 5-3, to three, but it's only third inning. Um, so I don't trust that right now. They freaking lost the other night in the ninth inning. But you got Boston beating Tampa Bay. Boston's at home. They're winning 8-2. to two. Boston's got 11 hits, 8 runs, no errors, while the Rays have 2 runs, 2 hits, 1 error. Bottom of the fifth. Um, next profit, welcome to the show. You've got the Red Sox winning, and if the the Yankees win, Yankees don't gain any ground. Um, you've got Cleveland on a freaking tire. I think this is like their 14th game in a row that they've won if they win against Baltimore. Um, profit says go Saints. You've got the Rockies in... Um, uh, the Dodgers. The Dodgers have lost twelve of their thirteen games. They the 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 um, Diamondbacks have gained so much ground on that. Um, don't even know. Okay, so next prophet, you're on the show right now. So let's talk about the Saints. You're a Saints fan. Let's go ahead and dive into the Saints. Got an OU fan right here walking. Um, the Saints are playing the Vikings. The Saints are the underdogs in this game. So the, the Saints are plus three. So Minnesota minus three at home. Um, so what do you think, Next Prophet? Um, well, we have, let's, get in, let's wait to get into college here in just a minute. So Minnesota, oh, Next Prophet says 24-21 Saints. You know, I actually agree with that. Um, I, I don't think that the Saints should be an underdog in this game. I think that um, whoever made that bet, they got the Minnesota Vikings 64.1 chance of beating the Saints. So, let's go and talk a little bit NCAA football. Um, we've got, uh, well, right now you've got the Oklahoma State Cowboys, which I freaking hate. They suck. I don't want to talk about them when they're playing South Alabama. So you got OU playing Ohio State. OU's number five, Ohio State's number two. 
Ohio State's favored by seven and a half points. Um, it's a little bit tougher to play Ohio State at Ohio, but I think when you got Baker Mayfield that started last week, you know, 18 in a row, bam, 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 and he would have went 25 in a row, but he did that bomb and screwed it up. I don't know why he did that. You've got Stanford at USC, USC minus six. USC is playing tough this year, um, and I think that they'll win that by 10. Um, Cincinnati at Michigan. You got Michigan by 34 and a half points. Those of you watching, do you think that Michigan at home that's playing the Cincinnati Bearcats, do you think Michigan can cover the 34 and a half points? Um, yes or no? The other team, we got Alabama. They're playing Fresno State, Alabama, by 43 and a half points. Now, here is where I say they're at Alabama. I say take Fresno plus 43 and a half because I think Alabama will get so far ahead, maybe 35, 40 points ahead. Then they'll put in their second string or maybe third string, and Fresno will, will score a touchdown, maybe field goal. But I don't think. Now, Alabama's going to win, and they'll win big, but I don't think they'll cover the 43-and-a-half points because I just I don't think that Nick Saban will, will run up the score like that. Um, so you got TCU, number 23, um, playing Arkansas, Arkansas Razorbacks, and TCU's minus three. I'm not going to go against that. Um, Next Prophet says, I like the Sooners and the points. I do, too. So, TCU winning my three, that's not far-fetched. That's not a bet that I would bet against. I, I'll take TCU, but I'm not going to take Arkansas on that. And then you got Clemson. You got Auburn playing Clemson. Clemson's only favored by five, but um, uh, I don't think that um, I would take that bet. I'd take that bet. Um but, yeah, TCU, yeah, they'll, they'll beat Arkansas, no problem. I mean, they should have more than three points on that. But absolutely. Let's talk a little bit of highlights and top headlines, shall we? Um, so, uh, you've got one of the biggest stories, if not the biggest story, in um, football right now. you got Ezekiel Elliott that was being accused of domestic violence accused and Wednesday show was uh, NFL Mafia and um, <clears throat> I talked a lot about this and I think they're going after Ezekiel Elliott Ezekiel Elliott no matter what you're accused of in the world whether it's murder, rape um, drug possession um, DUI uh, domestic violence, anything. If you are found not guilty in a court of law, why is it fair for the NFL to be like, yeah, you're not guilty, but we think you did it. I mean, um, Blue Tick Hound, put that up one more time. Yeah, we think you did it. So, but in Frisco, Texas, a federal judge, Amos Mazant granted a request by the NFL Players Association for a temporary restraining order and preliminary injunction to prevent the implementation of the six-game suspension for the Dallas Cowboys running back Ezekiel Elliott. Basically, this judge in Texas, a good old boy, told the NFL to suck it. And that's exactly what the NFL has to do. Because I guarantee you, Jerry Jones, somewhere, some way, somehow, made some phone calls. I'll take a burrito with extra sauce, extra cheese. <laughs> and um, I, I, I guarantee you, a good old boy, and um, he knew somebody somewhere, <laughs> talked to this judge, and um, made it happen. Not saying that something's going to happen, not going to happen to Ezekiel Elliott later. 
But as far as right now, Ezekiel Elliott is going to play the entire NFL season. So, um, NFL can't touch him. And I guarantee you that pissed off Roger Goodell and pissed off a lot of people in the NFL. So, this is what, um, here, here's, um, Blue Check Count says, NFL's own investigator suggested no suspension because he was extorted. Goodell didn't listen. Oh, the lady he hired. So here is a quote from the attorney. We are very pleased that Mr. Elliott will finally be given the opportunity to have an impartial decision maker carefully examine the NFL's misconduct. This is just the beginning of the unveiling of the NFL's mishandling as it relates to Mr. Elliott's suspension. Well, absolutely. I mean, the NFL, they, they, they mishandle quite a few things. And, um, and it is just, it's a travesty that, um, that, uh, you know, this happens, but it does happen. And, you know, you, you've got, um, you know, the, the, the NFL, you know, playing the mob boss on this. And they thought that they had somebody um, um, under their thumb. And then the federal judge just came in, swooped in and said, nope. Not going to have it. Not going to have it. And, um, and, 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 you know, it just pisses a lot of people off. Lucha Cam says, I can't believe the owners put up with this clown. He is hurting the league image. Well, the thing about that is, um, <clears throat> it, it is so much red tape and so much lawyers bickering back and forth and threatening and this, that, and the other. Um, now, Roger Goodell does do things for the owners, but there are, are some things that he um, just doesn't... Um, he punishes people and then takes away the punishment, and then when he should take away the punishment, he punishes people, and that's not right. And, um, oh, Bounty Gate, oh, um, Blue Tick, uh, not Blue Tick, uh, Next Prophet said he screwed, uh, Bounty Gate, um, for, uh, but let's just, um, say this, though, about Bounty Gate. Um, explain a little bit of what you mean, because they, they did do that. I mean, Next Prophet, they did do that. Let's just, let's just call that as it is. Um, but I think Roger Goodell too big for his britches, as they would say in Texas. And um, yeah, Blue Tick does make a good point. Blue Tick Hound says Bounty Gate happened. Ezekiel Elliott was just being extorted. So yeah, that's that's absolutely freaking true. Um, so next profit, you gotta. You got to man up and say, yeah, my team's freaking screwed up. Uh, my coach screwed up. The staff screwed up. The ownership screwed up. Um, you, you've got to, you, you've got to admit that, brother. I mean, um, again, I'm not a, I'm not a, a fan of, of, of either team per se. <clears throat> but um, when someone's being extorted, I don't care who it is. If you're being extorted for money, like Ezekiel Elliott was and is and has, um, you need to stand up and be like, yeah, that's wrong. And, um, I think they should go after the person that tried to extort. And I think that, um, something should happen to her legally. I think that she should, um, okay. Next prophet says, um, every team has bounties and, um, can you prove it? Unless you unless you've been in the locker room, um, can you prove it? I'm not saying that they don't. Um, but um, I think that um, how 
Wow, how do you know that? Can't assume. Now, I have been in locker rooms of many different sports, and I do know what goes on. I'm not going to say what goes on, but if I say something, it's because I know firsthand knowledge, not just because, oh, I think they do it. Now, <clears throat> there is a difference between going out and hurting somebody and going out and injuring. There's nothing wrong with hitting somebody um, on, 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 on a play, on tackling them or anything like that. There's nothing wrong with that. But to go out and try to injure somebody, that absolutely is something wrong with that. So, so dive into boxing real quick. You've got Triple G, um, rare trash talk of Canelo Alvarez. Okay? So, Here's a quote. I am not Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., and Canelo is no Danny Jacobs. There are no survivors in my fights, um, Triple G said. Um, boxing is a business. If I look great against Jason, Jacobs, if I knocked him out, I would not be getting this fight with Canelo now. Okay. Um, but again, I mean... That's kind of cool. I mean, uh, Triple G's coming out, and he's laying the smack down, something that he normally doesn't do. And, you know, and I, and I like that. You know, there, there are some fighters that, um, um, that, that, that will that, that'll, that'll trash talk, and then there's some fighters that will talk with their fists. And, you know, Triple G um, does talk with his fist. Um, I think that... Um, you know, it's going to be an interesting fight. It'll be a good fight. I still think, though, that Canelo has a chance because Triple G had some issues with his last fight. I think that uh, um, <clears throat> you know, Canelo has a legitimate chance here. I mean, he really does. Um, I think that if he just sticks to his game plan and don't worry about, you know, uh, I mean, Triple G does not know how to cut the the ring off, and, um, and uh, you know, but if he goes after him, and if he just sticks to his game plan, I really think that Canelo could frustrate Triple G, um, and when you frustrate somebody, you can make them make a mistake. And that's exactly what I think is going to happen with this fight. Um... Someone mentioned something earlier about the Giants game on Sunday. I believe you said the Giants were going to beat the Cowboys at home. Meaning the Cowboys home. Um, now that you have... Oh, the Giants are getting smoked. Okay, all right, all right. Well, the Giants are plus four and a half. Now, that might be a single bet you want to do. I mean, if you want to... Uh, the take the Cowboys, you know, on that. I think that that would be a, a safe bet. But I think um, it, 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 it's hard to beat Dallas at home no matter who's out or who's in. But, again, the Dallas Cowboys have something to prove. The Dallas Cowboys have a chip on the shoulder. Ezekiel Elliott has a chip on the shoulder. And he's going to stuff things down people's throats and – I hope it freaking does, and um, and ain't nothing wrong with that. So, um, you know, and again, throughout the show, guys, girls, everybody in between, um, ask questions about sports. It could be anything sports. Those of you, you know, in Boston that are listening that aren't watching, you could, uh, you know, if you want to watch, go to periscope.tv forward slash sports insider. And um, you can watch the show, ask questions. If you want to um, tweet, you can tweet on Sports Insider 03. You can tweet me your questions on that. We can talk anything about sports that you want. And um, so we've got some <clears throat> nice upcoming events as far as, um, you know, the UFC 
goes. <clears throat> you know, I still think, and I, and I say this every single show, I still think that the UFC needs to slow down a little bit um, on, you know, the UFC fight nights all the time. I think, uh, and, and the pay-per-views. I think they should have three pay-per-views a year. And I know it's all about money, 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 money. But I think they can make more money if they do three pay-per-views a year, have them really big. And uh, I think... Um, I think um, they could definitely, but again, they're all about money. They're not gonna. They don't freaking care if they do one every month. But uh, <clears throat> tomorrow, September 9th, two thousand seventeen, in Edmonton, Canada, you've got UFC two one five, and um, got you know, let's see, two eleven fights. Got the early prelims. Got two fights in the early prelims. Okay. Got um, Kajan Johnson against um, Adriano Martins. Um, Adriano's twenty-eight and eight. Johnson is twenty-one and twelve. Um, again, I say this on all shows as well, especially when I talk UFC, and I've been to enough UFC fights. Um, Bellator fights, I mean, uh, King of the Cage, um, West Coast Fighting Championships, um, all of that stuff, and more times than not, the UFC, or in any of those, the, the early prelims or the preliminary fights are more exciting, they're more in-depth, they're more vigorous. And they're more intense than your headliners. Now, I particularly think that the headliner in two, uh, UFC 215 pretty stellar. And we'll get to that in a minute. Um, and then you have your prelims. Um, you've got uh, Sarah McMahon, 11-3. Caitlin um, Varia, or Varia, Vera. Can't say her freaking name right. Um, <clears throat> Next Profit, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so that's a pretty decent fight. You've got three female fights in this whole thing. You've got uh, Sarah Moraz against Ashley Evans Smith. Ashley Evans Smith looks more like a hairdresser than an MMA fighter. If you guys missed the show last Friday, I had. Um, uh, MMA fighter live on air for the whole hour and um, the Warrior Watson. That's a pretty freaking cool show. Um, you've got Gavin Tucker against Rick Glenn. Um, Gavin Tucker is 10 and 0. Um, Rick Glenn is 19 and 4, but his knockout to TKO ratio is 63%. So. He's got a uh, better um, stand-up game. The other gentleman's got a slightly better ground game. But again, when you have got a strong ground guy, they're always going to try and take it to the ground. You've got a strong stand-up guy, they're always going to try and keep it standing up. So, but when you get onto the main card, you have uh, um, Gilbert Melendez. That's going to be a pretty interesting fight. Against Jeremy Stevens. Jeremy Stevens, 25-13-0. Melendez is 22-6-0. That, on the main card between that one and the Nunez fight, I believe those two fights are going to be the ones that, you know, really pay for the show. Uh, You've got freaking this cat, um, you know... Um, Latifi, called the Sledgehammer. The guy totally looks like he's, I mean, he's got a big upper body, but he looks like he's on, walking on two little toothpicks. It's kind of funny looking. Um, Tyson Pedro of Australia, 6-0. and Um, <clears throat> Henry Cueto against Wilson Reese. Um, that's an okay fight on that one, but the one that I want to see, I mean, the... 
Rafael Dos Anjos, I mean, I really think he's going to get destroyed in this. Um, Neil Magny, I think he's going to destroy um, Dos Anjos. Um, I mean, <clears throat> that's my, uh, that's my, um, that's my prediction. But the one I want to see, the fight that I want to see is Amanda Nunez, the lioness, against Valentina Shevchenko, the bullet. Nunez is going to do to Shevchenko what she did to freaking Ronda Rousey. Nunez is going to destroy Valentina. Nunez is 14-4. Now, now Valentina's got a, a, a favorable um, uh, record with 14-2. Uh, and two, You know, absolutely. But Nunez knockout KO ratio is 71%. You've got um, Shevchenko, 29%. And the submission... Now, Shevchenko is 36%, um, but I, 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 I do not see this fight going more than two rounds. I see Nunez slapping her around a lot in the first round and just kind of going after her. And I think the second round, probably around the 315 to 330 mark, Nunez will, uh, I think she'll knock her out. I think she'll knock her out. I mean, it's always fun. I like to see submissions because, to me, submissions are, um, in some fighters that I've talked to, submissions is more of a um, victorious win for them because they made somebody tap out. They submitted them. You know, I mean, knocking somebody out, you can get a lucky shot. That's great and everything. But to make somebody um, tap out, that is something that... Um, Really make somebody uh, smile and really boost your confidence. But um, I think that uh, I think she'll destroy. Her. So I mean, if you guys want to bet any fight that I would bet on, um, the couple fights I'd bet on, I'd bet on the um, Sarah McMahon fight and then Nunez. Obviously Nunez all day long, but um, I like to see the the, the submission in, a, in the UFC fight. 22nd, we've got some uh, boxing matches coming up um, here in town, so that's going to be that's going to be fun. I don't know the card yet, but um, that is something that I look forward to. Um, guys have been a little bit quiet tonight. I'm on air. Blue Tick Hound has been saying some stuff, but I don't read it because 90% of the stuff that they write is a bit off color, so. Those of you watching can see what he writes, um, but I just uh, I just uh, kind of let it pass over. But uh, and again, for those just tuning in, you're watching uh, or listening to Sports Insider on Armed Radio out of Boston, Massachusetts. I'm in California, being syndicated there in 60 countries, over three million people worldwide. Go to tune in, download the app. And then search on radio. You can listen to my show every Wednesday and Friday. Uh, Johnny Blender's got a show every Wednesday uh, called Whiskey, Cars, and Cigars. Got um, Get Your Swole On after my show on Wednesdays. Got um, Lynn Gibson, the Southern Horror Queen. Got Amy Chafalo. She talks about rock and roll. Got... Um, uh, Joe Savino with um, Night Talk. You got you, you got Night Talk with Joe Rocks. You got Pot Talk with Jim Bell. And when I say Pot Talk, I'm not talking about marijuana. I'm talking about politically offensive talk. You know what? I, I I feel bad. I have yet to 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 uh, to, to listen to the show yet. I I, I need to. Um, because I would love to chime in on that. Love to chime in on that. I was at school yesterday, and uh, someone stopped me and was like, Hey, man, help me stop Trump. I'm like, stop him from doing what? He's like, well, we're trying because he's this and that and the other thing. And they brought up abortion. 
And I said, well, let me stop you right there. I said, the two things are going to piss people off. Religion and abortion. Or politics, period. But I said, abortion is very um, close to my heart because I have a daughter that's about to be 16 years old. Her mom tried to abort her. Only to, piss, only to, to hurt me. That's why she, she tried to do it. I stopped it. My daughter's almost 16 years old, alive and well. So, and then I guess I pissed the guy off. And he goes, well, I got to disengage from this conversation. So, I guess if you don't have the same knee pads on and pucker up to the same foul that this guy does, I guess um, he doesn't want to talk to you. But, um, <clears throat> anyway, I don't even know what my freaking point is. It was. Oh, yeah, I was talking about Jim. Bell. Then you have uh, Straight Talk with Matt Hazley. And uh, it has nothing to do with gay or straight. It's just straight talk. And, uh, and he calls it like it is. I, I, I've been on his show a couple times. And and uh, he's also on Facebook. So I could watch his show. And I can make comments. And it's it's um, it's um uh, it's pretty cool. So they got shows Monday through Friday. They have a plethora of other shows. Um, and, uh, go listen to those and, 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 and talk on there and engage, go to their Facebook pages and, um, join their Facebook page and engage with them. They, they love that. We're, we're, you know, we're trying to, to build these guys up and any show that you want to, uh, listen to armed radio's got it on there, man. And, um, so it, it, it's, uh, pretty freaking awesome. But any sports questions you guys have out there? You know, I don't know if Next Profit is still on or Blue Tick can. Ask a legitimate question, Blue Tick, if you're going to ask one. Don't be a twat about it. Um, ask a question. So uh, let, let's go over and let's see what the scores are now with MLB. See if the Yankees have given up a lead. No, it is still 5-3 to three Yankees, top of the fifth. Um, Boston still beating Tampa Bay Rays, 8-2. to two. Um and it is the top of seventh. Now let's look at the standings. Standings. Now the Dodgers were, well, I won't even get to them yet, but Boston Red Sox are still ahead in the AL East. Three and a half games over the Yankees. It's going to stay that way because the Yankees are going to win and Boston's going to win, so it's going to stay that way. Cleveland Indians, their last ten games, 10 and zero. Oh. Um, Gronk did get open last night. There, that that there, that was a catch. They overturned it, but that was a catch in the end zone. And I'm sure everyone in Boston will freaking agree with me. The Indians uh, are 11 games ahead of Minnesota Twins. Uh, Houston Astros, 14 and a half games over the Angels. Nationals, 19 games over the Marlins. Cubs are only five games. No, it didn't hit the ground. Now, it might have hit the ground, but he had possession of it. Um, L.A. Dodgers, 10 games up. They're 1-9 in, in their last 10 games, and the Arizona Diamondbacks are 10-0. and 0. <clears throat> If the Dodgers keep playing the way that they've been playing right now, the Arizona Diamondbacks could very easily overtake them um, in the West. So let's just look at the Dodgers real quick, and let's see how many games that they have left. That um, I mean, if you, it's just a travesty. Uh, the all their games lose, 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 and they're losing the the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Milwaukee Brewers, and the Padres. Sucky teams. So they've got let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. They've got 22 games left in the season. And it is very easy to say that they could only win half of those. Um, I mean, they, they play the Rockies. They could probably win one out of that. They play the Giants uh, six more times. I'll say they split the series and win three. So there's four games. They win the Nationals once. They win one on Phillies. One Diego and one Colorado. So out of the 22 games, they could... They could win feasibly only eight more games, the Dodgers, and then that will put them at an even 100 games. 
Um, but I don't know if they're losing on purpose. I, I just don't know. But they're choking just like they do every single freaking year. They will do good. They will do good all freaking year long. And when it comes down to it, especially in the playoffs, they suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. And um, I don't know. Let's talk about some obscure sports. You know, you've got high ally, you've got cricket, you've got soccer. That's not really obscure, but I mean, here in America it is. And uh, tennis, golf. I mean, I don't talk too much about those sports on air, uh, but people don't ask questions about them. Um, top shelf. You've obviously not been on the show for at least three months, or else you would have known the answer to that question. But Squally's no longer. He's gone. He passed away. So uh, he's gone. G-O-N-E. G-O-N. Forget the silent E. He's gone. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> but we touch on them every once in a while. And, um, but, you know, I mean, it is... Uh, it is, um, but they're still sports. I mean, I, even freaking bowling's a sport. Someone told me yesterday, they're like, oh, my God, I don't want to watch golf. It is the most boring sport to watch. And I'm like, you know what? Watch bowling, and I think you'll change your mind on that. Bowling is just um, freaking crazy. You want to talk some more crazy? Here's some more crazy. Not too long ago, you had Conor McGregor announcing that they were that he was granted a professional boxing license, and then you had the debacle and the circus of the whole Mayweather thing. Now, Chris Cyborg Justino was granted her professional boxing license. So, what do you think's going to happen there? He's going to fight in the boxing ring. But I pers I personally think she will fare a lot better than McGregor did. Um, so here, 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 here's a quote. Chris has always shown an interest and passion for all combat sports. She loves to challenge her skills. She loves to take steroids, too. Um, continuing the quote. She wants to professionally box in 2018, while, of course, taking into consideration how Zufa feels about it, any decision on a boxing match would be made with that in mind. No, it won't. It'll be made with how much money can we make. That's what it's going to be made. You know, um, it's not going to be made um, any, any other way. Um... For those of you who haven't done this yet, I implore you to go to sportsinsideronline.com. Check out um, the uh, new articles that we got up there. We've got a couple new um, sports um, writers, contributors that contribute to the magazine. Nate Rand's been a bit silent lately. Um, the other dude that did the, the MMA stuff, he's been silent lately. So if you guys would like to write for an online sports magazine and be a contributing writer, go to sportsinsideronline.com, email me, tell me what sport you would like to write about. If you want to write one article a month, so be it. That's fine. Um, but it's just, uh, if you want to write, go ahead, do that, send it to us, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, get you going on that. <clears throat> Got some really good articles. Um, cover a lot of stuff. There's, I mean, here in Northern California, we cover the Giants, the A's, the Raiders, the 49ers, the River Cats, Golden State Warriors, Sacramento Kings. We we go to uh, Sonoma, cover racing, boxing, MMA, golf tournaments here, Tahoe. You name it, we cover it, and um, it, it's uh, it, it's it's pretty fun. Pretty fun, but, uh, and again, everyone that watches the show and listens to the show 
I really do appreciate everybody watching and listening because um, we have a lot of fun on here, um, and um, it, it's good to talk about sports. It's fun to talk about sports. I try and stay. I mean, I will talk uh, about um, some mainstream headlines or not, but I, I, I try and talk some obscure stuff too because there's a lot of things happening in sports. That's why I had you know Emily Watson. Um, on the, on the show last week, she's an up-and-coming MMA fighter, and I'm the only one that's given her an interview, and I'll interview her again, but he was raw, she told it like it was, and um, I talked to her, let's see, after the interview, I talked to her for another two hours after the interview. Um, we all sat down, we had dinner, and and uh, we chatted and got to know her a little bit more on a personal level. And it is just, um, it's interesting. And this is around the MMA camps. There is so much, and, and this is with every MMA fighter that I've talked to. There is so much turmoil that are in these MMA camps. <laughs> like, um... Even when she was going and trying out for one, there was another female there, which I personally know and I've known for a couple of years. And I was quite shocked that she acted that way. Um, he said something a little off color to um, Emily. And um, it's just weird how you have that kind of turmoil within an MMA camp. You think that it would be more of, of, of team playing. You think it would be more camaraderie. You would think it would be more... Hey, I'll help you, you help me, I'll make you look good, you make me look good. And But no, it's very cliquish, it's very standoffish, and there's a lot of people, I'll just use Team Alpha Male, Uriah Faber's freaking camp. There's been a lot of people leave Uriah Faber's camp because of him, because of the way he acts, and because of how everyone treats each other. And that's not my opinion, that is absolute fact that has been told to me Straight from people's mouths. <laughs> They're not doing this to a, a vendetta. They, they told me what happened, and it's pretty jacked up. Um, then they'll go fight for somebody else. <clears throat> and that is the way that I see it around many of the MMA camps. And um, it's just sad to see. And then within the MMA, then within the UFC, you've got all that click going on. you got all that. And that's why people are leaving the UFC. And going to Bellator, and uh, Bellator is um, got some, you know, pretty good um, uh, things going with them. They're, they're they're rising up in the ranks, and um, you don't really hear too much negative things being said about Bellator. Mainly is because they take care of their fighters, they take care of their people. And um, <clears throat> a lot of your fighters are a lot uh, happier um, at Bellator. Um, a lot of the organization um, is better with Bellator. Um, so you've got, like, I mean, a, a really cool thing that they've got um, coming up is you've got on Bellator, you got FanFest. Um, you've got, um, you could meet people that want to go out there, um, and it's in Milpitas, California, which is, um, just, uh, in the Bay Area, you've got Dan Henderson, uh, you've got Mike Goldberg, you've got Big John McCarthy, Julia Budd, um, <clears throat> so, Friday, September 22nd, from 8 to 11 p.m. at Dave and & Buster's, and, um... Huh. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's cool for the fighters to go out and mingle with the fans and, and talk to them, answer questions. And it's good for the fans to do that. Go out there and um, and, and uh, meet the fighters. Um, it, it, it gets them a little bit transparent. And <clears throat> and, uh, and when I, it's, it's really cool to, uh, to go out and do that. Get to know them on a personal level. But me, I get to talk to him when I interview him. I get to talk to him before the show. I get to talk to him during the show. I get to talk to him after the show. And I've interviewed over 100 fighters um, 
since I've been doing this, um, all over, I, I'm, I mean, all over the place. And they know that I'm a straight shooter. They know that I'm not going to say anything that um, they didn't say. If they, if they say a, a quote, I'm going to direct quote them. And um, if, if they, you know, and they're very honest on the show. And I have them on for the entire hour. I don't, uh, I don't pull any punches. I think they, uh, they appreciate that. And, um, and it's great. So one thing before I get off air that's pissing me off right now, and I said if the Yankees could still hold on, and they haven't, the Rangers just tied up the game, bottom of the fifth. It is Yankees five, Rangers five, and um, got Tanaka pitching for the Yankees. Only four innings pitched, three earned runs, seven strikeouts, no walks. But... You know, I've said this for the past 10 years. That is the Yankees' Achilles heel, is their dead gum freaking pitching because they don't freaking have things on a consistent basis. They need more starters, a couple relievers, and two more good closers. But the starters, if, you have some, if you've got better starters that start the game, you won't get into this problem to where you have... Um, so the, these these issues um, uh, coming up with with with, with um, you know the, the scoring early on, yeah, you've got to create um, you know a, a good offense for your team and, and, and score runs for your pitcher, but you also have to have good defense as well. But it's also on the pitcher if if, if a pitcher lands it. But uh, but anyway, I digress on that. I'll, I'll talk about that later. But folks, my time is up. I thank everybody, again, for listening and watching. Boston, everybody around the world, uh, have a good weekend. Be safe. Peace out. See you next Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific. Peace out. I love you.